busting. No union 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 busting. Mayor Bean, stand up. These terms of employment strips workers of their basic rights. These rights have taken over 50 years of collective, collective bargaining to achieve, and it won't be taken easily. Citizens of this city will not accept the substandard service that this administration has forced them to endure. Closing police and fire stations, reducing service, reducing manpower, place their lives in overwhelming danger from crime and violence. The increasing crime in Detroit has become the norm. It has become tolerated, accepted, until today. Citizens of Detroit will no longer endure substandard services. Today they have made a choice not to live in fear, not to be afraid of their homes, afraid to leave their homes, or afraid that they will become the next victim. What does it say about this administration when the men and women who protect the citizens of this city from being victims are now, are now victimizing us? The men and women who work in public safety place their lives on the line every day only to be treated like criminals instead of the professionals that they truly are. We are that thin blue line that protects this city from those that prey on its citizens. And today, that line is being stretched, it is being tested. We, when will this administration make public safety a priority? When will they put the safety of its citizens first by providing them protection, the same protection provided by other communities? When will this administration understand that without public safety, Detroit will never turn around? It will not sustain growth. It will not flourish. The only thing in Detroit that is flourishing is unabated crime. Response time for police and fire has been decreased. Houses are allowed to burn. Why? because of inadequate, equi inadequate equipment, the closure of firehouses, and reduced manpower. The police department first combined precincts into districts. But hell, that didn't work. Now they close precincts after 4 p.m. in an attempt to improve manpower. That didn't work. So they changed how crimes are categorized, all to manipulate the stats. The powers to be have taken more time and money to give the citizens the appearance of safety instead of investing in their safety. All right. Amen. It becomes more dangerous for men of members of public safety to work in this city. So how dangerous do you think it is to live here? Frankly, you don't live in Detroit. You survive in Detroit. Not knowing if you're going to be the next victim or the next news story. This administration has taken the stance to cut the most important service that is rendered to this city, and that is public safety. To impose terms of employment that reduces compensation, making police officers and their counterparts the lowest paid officers when compared to the top 50 cities in America. It means a 1% increase in pay since 2004, at a time when the cost of living has skyrocketed. The elimination of benefits will decrease the overall compensation by 20%. This has been, this, there has been much to talk about, much to talk about the death benefit. Of course, now the administration claims that it didn't eliminate the benefit. After I received the terms of uh, employment from the city, they didn't eliminate it. They just cut it. They cut it from $35,000 to $10,000. I don't know about you, but my family feels real, real shouldn't worry about that. We'll be fine. And I know that I favor my, my people, my, my family is grateful. But the terms of employment can be changed by this administration at any time. Without investment in public safety, many will seek employment elsewhere. And those who can, who can retire will. Those left behind are demoralized, disgruntled, and disheartened by this administration's war on police and fire. The citizens of Detroit have reached a boiling point and are demanding they be, they be protected. Public safety has reached a breaking point and demand that they are treated fairly. We took a oath, a promise, to protect the citizens of this, of this city and place our lives on the line each and every day. Many, far too many, 
that made the ultimate sacrifice protecting those who live, work, and visit this city. I want to make this perfectly clear, that oath, that promise, goes both ways. Mr. Mayor, you have an obligation to keep your word, and I have every intention to see that that promise is kept. The men and women of this association and our counterparts will continue this fight. The struggle has just begun. Amen. Now, he might not be able to see us right now, so let's walk around this. Let's walk around. I was going to say something bad, but let's walk around this building and raise our voice and tell him we are not going to take this. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. We are going to continue this struggle. We are going to win at all costs. DPT! 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 If you're taking 20% yes, cuts from the yes, who are the backbone of the city, -R. you expect the city to turn around and come around Detroit Fire Fighters Association. And, and it won't happen unless you have public safety. Public safety has to be priority number one. And until that effort is met, we will continue this fight as long as it takes. Now I know that the chief has asked that nobody kind of uh, back down from the job, make sure that the people are still safe, and he's hoping that there won't be any yeah. deep policing yeah. going on. We had 21 people run out of here last week, just yeah. last week. I'm sorry, 24 people who retired last yes, week. Sir. You cannot expect people to work in an environment that they work in in the city of Detroit and get paid the amount of money they're getting paid, minus the benefits, and continue to work here. People are going to leave. They're going to leave whether they, whether they got 10 years vested, if they just come on the job with less than five or six years, they're going to be looking for other, other employment. And why wouldn't you look for other employment? We are the lowest paid city in the top 50 in America. The lowest paid. There's nobody paid less than $52,000 a year in those top 50. That's Memphis and I think Albuquerque as well. Or New Orleans. Wasn't Detroit one of the highest paid at one time? Detroit was one of the highest paid back in the 60s. Yes. Long before I got on the job. Oh yeah. Hey Joe, yes. uh, you mentioned I'm a chill. You mentioned you're gonna do whatever it takes. What can you do at this point? Well we have we have we had an appeal that went up to uh, the, the appellate right. court. Uh, I have not gotten that decision as of yet. Uh, we expect it any day. It may have come, it may have come in. I haven't talked to my lawyer, I just got into town. Uh, if that is not successful, we'll we'll appeal it to the Supreme Court. I mean, we obviously we're law we're, we're law abiding people, we're law we're peace police officers. We're not talking about a stoppage, I'm not talking about a strike because we legally can. But what I need to, people of Detroit to understand is, is that without their help, without them standing up and saying, hey, we can't take this anymore. You know, when you become when shootings and, and, and rapes and, and, and violent crime becomes just a natural occurrence that you do. You know, you wake up and somebody's dead, you just step over them. I mean, something has to stop. And it's, the only way it's going to stop is with the citizens themselves. So is your message to City Hall they need to redirect more of the limited resources to public safety? Or what? If limited resources is the word that they, they actually utilize. If, if public safety is the priority that, that they, they, they say it is, in which, in which it should be, because I, I guarantee you, you, you don't have anywhere in America, if you're not safe in your home, you're not going to live there. That's why they have this mad exodus of people leaving Detroit. You know, first, you know, back in the early 70s, 70s and 80s, they talked about white, white flight. Now it's life flight. People are leaving based on the fact that you know they, they can't, they can't live, they can't survive. Survive, surviving here is, 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 is very tough, extremely tough. The last question I have is: We had a case this morning where they found a car and. A woman was on the phone three different times from 3.45 this morning until officers arrived at 9 o'clock. There was a report that someone else made a call and said there was a dead body in the car that turned out to be false. But are you going to see more of that? What's your comment to people calling in false and elevated reports to get the officers who are on to come out faster? Well, the problem is that that's been an ongoing problem in the city of Detroit. Obviously, they know that if, if you, if they, the way that the chief prioritizes runs, that the only way you're going to get somebody out there is to make that call. And obviously, that puts a strain on the system as well. So, no, they shouldn't do that. But, I mean, people are frustrated. You know, they, they, they want the service that they pay for. 
and they're entitled to it. And what does that do to your officers when they go to a false call? Well, obviously, you know, we don't have enough as it is, so you're taking resources that could be very well put someplace where, where it's actually needed. But, the, but you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, you've had over a thousand officers leave within the last 15 years, you know, either through retirement, and they haven't been replaced. When I came on the job, we had 5,500 officers. That was in 1900, 1900 I want to say, in 77. Now, I think we got like 2,075, maybe 2,000. And out of that 2,000, you got about 300 that can actually retire. And that's not including people that can take a, take a 10 year early retirement just to get out of there. And that's happening. It's happening every day. You're losing valuable uh, professionals. That I'll tell you, Atlanta was here two, two weeks ago trying to hire. Every time there's a problem in Detroit, you, you'll find some, some, some city coming somewhere to pick those individuals up because we're highly trained individuals, we're highly trained professionals. Joe, it's uh, yes. Jason Smith, uh, NBCGrill.com. Question, um, what kind of support have you guys received? Obviously, I see the firefighters that are also out here as well. What other support have you received from other unions around the city? Well, the UAW is here, uh, AFL-CIO I think is here, uh, ASME is here as well. Uh, this is EMS is here. Uh, I had some uh, support from uh, MAP, that's, a, that's a, uh, one of our sister organizations that uh, basically deals with out-county out uh, police contracts. Uh, I just went. I just came back from a uh, national conference in Florida. Uh, our national conference itself. Uh, I spoke with Tommy Nee, who's the president there. Uh, we made a uh, talked to a lot of individuals that's actually there, that from uh, from around this country as far as police officers are concerned. And just to let you know, I had I, I spoke with Joe Biden. He was actually I should say Joe Biden, that Vice President Biden. I talked with him as well to let him know what you know what what, what we're under here. So you know it's it's. It's, it's not something that's new. Uh, it's, it's happened in New Jersey, it's happened in Illinois, it's happened in Wisconsin. You know, in, West, in Wisconsin, they left police and fire alone. But you know, the only thing you say about Scott Walker is he was honest, he came in and told him what he was going to do. You know, Governor Snyder's doing this all back in. I just, sorry, I came yes. a little late. I just wanted to ask you quickly, um, what are the main issues and why you're out here today? I just that. I'm sorry, what? What are the, I guess, the main issues is why you're out here today? The main issue is basically citizens of Detroit. Obviously, uh, with the pay cuts that we're, that we're going to be left to endure, it's going to affect the service. I mean, obviously, people are going to leave, people are going to retire, and those that you're going to have some that's going to be disgruntled, it's human nature. I mean, my dad always told me, you pay for what you get. You get what you pay for. So, you know, it, it's, there are there going to be some people that, that are not happy about what's going on? That's human nature. It's going to happen. But the, for the most part, I'm here to ensure the citizens of Detroit we're going to be on the job. We're going to do our thing. We're backing them. Now we need for them to back us. Now, what can the citizens do to help back this? They need to, they, they need to not ask. They need to demand. They need to, to demand public safety is that priority. You budget public safety first. That's what you do. Then you find other other ways where you can make these cuts, and it's going to hurt. I'm not sitting here telling you that you know they they're flush with money or whatever. But there's ways. We looked in the budget ourselves and found several questionable items that was in the budget that needs to be addressed. And I'm quite sure you're not. You should be familiar with. What was it a month, two months ago when they found four and a half million in the lease, in lease cars? And that's just wasted money. And just because the police department is the largest budgeted department does not mean that they're actually utilizing that money to its full extent. And that's what we need to look at. There needs to be a forensic audit by someone other than the city to find out where money is and, and budget it accordingly. You have to prioritize. The, the DPOA has identified over $100 million questions by night. Highest crime! Lowest pay! Highest crime! Lowest pay! Highest crime! Lowest pay! Highest crime! Lowest pay! Lowest pay! Highest crime! Lowest pay! Highest crime! Lowest pay! Public from a hearing in front of Judge Amy Hathaway, where the citizens had sued three representative citizens for math and sued to overturn the financial stability of Detroit. Judge Hathaway just ruled on the side of the defendants, the city of Detroit, the mayor, and the state. So, uh, what does the DPOA see as a solution to dealing with the financial stability agreement and with health care, etc.? What uh, AFSCME 
successful Well, you know, there, 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 there's a little difference between ASPE and ourselves as we deal with 312. Right. Our main issue is the fact that they can't abolish uh, 312 based on this Public Act 4. So that's one of the crux of our uh, argument that is in that, that is in court right now. And if you know, I mean, we have to look at the times we live in. You know, we got a Republican governor. We got a Republican Court of Appeals. We got a Republican Supreme Court. So I mean, if it takes us to get to the Supreme Court to do that, that's what we'll do. Longer. Okay, so you have a case in court now? We do. In Wayne County Circuit Court? No, we filed in Lansing, in, in okay. uh, Ingham County, uh, Court of Claims. Oh, Ingham County in the Court of Claims. Yes. So what is the, is it the same type of uh, case? No. What's the grounds for the case? Why don't you talk to my lawyer, he'll be able to tell you exactly what Everything is available on the EPOA website. I know oh, we've, good. We've, we've, we've sent, and who are you with the Detroit? Voice. Uh, Voice of Detroit, oh, okay. online newspaper. Yeah, the, the issue involves the, the, the city's systematic dismantling of Act 312 and its attempt to take away collective bargaining rights for Detroit police officers so that they can impose these unconscionably and egregiously low uh, salary and benefit cuts. And this, this comes at a time when Detroit police officers are already the lowest paid in Michigan and as measured against the, uh, the, uh, virtually every other department in, in the country. And nobody seems to ask whether it be the media or the community, well, what are the consequences of these cuts? What happens when uh, the city of Detroit wins the uh, the, the race to the, the, the bottom um, in terms of the impact on public safety? And as President Duncan has indicated, just since July 1, 24 police officers have decided to take their talents, their expertise, and their professionalism elsewhere. Uh, and that's going to that's gonna continue the exodus. Uh, crime is not going to be reduced. Homicides are not going to be reduced. Union busting! No 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 union busting! Yeah.